Hi, my name is Gene Schrader, and this is a video course on reliability, availability, and maintainability, theory and practice on STM32. There are seven videos, including this one, and the total runtime is about three hours. Now, this is a general topic that applies to a lot of types of systems, but it is particularly important for embedded systems. I like it because it gets you close to the hardware, and it's a very unique type of processing. One part of it is dealing with very bad events that you hope will never happen. Um, and I call it panic mode processing, just to give you an idea. I've worked in Embedded for 40 years, and I know that these events do occur, and I have a few stories to tell about it throughout the course. You could say that this is an area that separates uh, university projects and demos from real-world products. And for that reason, it isn't often covered much in courses on, on Embedded, because in those courses, usually you have enough to do just to get the basic operation. So I think this course would be useful for people working in the embedded field, but I think students might also find it useful just to get a broader view of what embedded is all about. So here is the outline of this first video, which I'll go through briefly. Uh, so first I go over the course objectives and content. Then I discuss suggested prerequisites for doing this course. Then I talk about the hardware and software I used in developing the course. And finally, there are some course notes on things like uh, GitHub repos. Here are the course objectives and content. The first objective is to simply learn the meaning of reliability, availability, and maintainability, which is abbreviated as RAM. By the way, this abbreviation of RAM is uh, unfortunate and confusing, but this is what is used. So understanding the terminology is important because it allows you to speak precisely with others and read articles and documentation and know what they're talking about. The next objective is to learn about techniques of RAM on Embedded. This is the bulk of the course, and each of these techniques is a lesson. For each of these techniques, I give some background or theory, maybe some requirements and design notes, and then go over uh, the implementation and do a demo. And I usually end the lesson with some prompts or questions for discussion. So the techniques are listed here. I'll start with lightweight logging to a circular buffer, which is dumped to flash on faults. And I liken this to a flight recorder on an aircraft that lets investigators know what happened uh, before a crash. Then there is a lesson on handling of faults of different types and the processing being done in panic mode. This is sort of the core of the software for this course. Then we have watchdogs, sometimes referred to as watchdog timers that monitor uh, your software, make sure it's all running. Uh, next is stack overflow protection, which relates to memory. And finally, we have audits and asserts. Uh, this uh, lesson is a little bit different because um, it's just a discussion of the techniques and there's no implementation or demo. Another objective that's really on me is to have complete implementations with field grade designs. Uh, this doesn't mean the uh, code is bug free. I hope it's pretty good. <laughs> but what I saying here is that they're based on sound designs. And um, this is what I've done in all my uh, YouTube courses. So this means that new software Modules developed for this course conform to the Superloop architecture and can coexist with modules performing um, their own uh, often unrelated uh, functions. This is a, a, a proper Superloop design. And another thing is new software modules uh, need to provide debug and test capabilities. I just view that as a requirement and to do a complete job. Finally, I just want to mention this uh, course is software oriented. But uh, keep in mind that hardware can play a big role in um, RAM, as well as in safety. I want to discuss suggested prerequisites for this course. Now, if you are interested in the topics, uh, feel free to ignore these suggestions and just go for it. Um, I understand that sometimes you just want to view a course to get sort of an idea of what it's about, even if you can't follow some of the details. So first of all, this course is a continuation of my YouTube course uh, with this long title. Uh, that course included um, you know, getting started with Embedded using the uh, STM32 and the IDE. 
It also included the development of a software infrastructure layer uh, or architecture based on the super loop and module pattern. And there's a link to this course uh, in the notes for this video. So in, the, in this course we're looking at now, um, the software is based on that module API established in the base course. And it uses a number of infrastructure modules from the base course, things like timers and console. Now, compared to my base course, just to be clear, this one is more advanced. It includes things like exception handling, details on the stack, uh, editing linker scripts, and system programming in, in general. So the suggested prerequisites are first either my base course on bare metal embedded or a similar knowledge of MCUs and embedded programming. Another uh, prerequisite is C programming and I say greater than a beginner level. Uh, if you don't know C or maybe just know a tiny bit about C, um, some parts of this class you'll pro it, it'll be difficult I'll say. But you know <laughs> if you're willing to learn as you go um, it, it would work out fine. Uh, and then finally, a willingness to cover a lot of concepts and technology that might be new to you. And um, also looking at reference manuals to dig into things deeper. Um, there are a lot of specialized topics in this uh, course. Here I'll tell you about the hardware and software I used in developing this course. The main thing was this STM32 Nucleo board. And you can see the MCU model that's on that board. Uh, I also used an Adafruit uh, temperature and humidity sensor for one of the demos, but it's really a tiny part of the course. So do you need this hardware? Well, if you wanted to experiment with my code directly, using this exact hardware, hardware will make it uh, the easiest since it should just compile. If you have other hardware, uh, it's going to take some work, most likely, to reuse my code because you know, there'll be hardware differences that um, you'll have to make changes for. Um, or you might just want to watch this cor course to understand the concepts and get the ideas, uh, watch the demos, and in that case, you don't need any hardware at all. In terms of software, uh, here is the list. Everything is uh, free. Uh, I mentioned the IDE here. I did use this um, when developing the software, mainly for the debugger. And... Uh, but it's not really shown up in the in the lessons. Um, the assumption is <laughs> the code got developed, and I don't really go through that step by step. Uh, I also mentioned Python here because I wrote a Python tool as part of this course to decode fault reports. It's called the formatting tool, and I use that in the demos. Uh, this is a good example of why knowing Python is a useful skill for embedded developers. Now, uh, to be clear, I don't go into the implementation of this tool, so you won't see any Python code in the course. But of course, if you wanted to run that tool, you would need to make sure you have Python installed on your uh, development machine. Now, this last point is about infrastructure software that runs on the MCU. This is just saying I'm using code that I developed in previous lessons. And all that code, um, both the new code for this lesson and, and what I, it's based on from previous lessons, it's all in the GitHub repo for this course. Before I get into the real lessons, I want to give you an idea of the software architecture that I developed in the introductory course on an embedded. And since that course, I continue to build on that architecture, normally through creating new modules and enhancing existing ones. Now this diagram is really busy, and I won't go through it in great detail. Uh, but this shows all of the software contained in the MCU image. And I think it's often useful uh, to get the complete picture on one page. And I will go through a few things. First, everything above this purple line is code that I wrote for this course or previous courses. And that's in the GitHub repo for this course. Everything below this purple line is standard C libraries that came with the tool chain or code provided by the IDE, including code generated by the IDE. Now at the very top, we see uh, new modules developed for this course. They are outlined in red and have red text. And they are, I'll just briefly mention them, this is the lightweight logging uh, module. This is the fault module that is sort of the core of the software for this course. This is the watchdog module 
and this is a flash module just used to write data to flash. You can also see some of these other modules. These were existing ones that I sort of refer to as uh, infrastructure. Now, the modules with the sort of gray background are ones that um, interface to hardware, and they either use the STM32LL library, where LL stands for low level, or they use the SEMSYS library. Now, these modules with a yellow uh, background uh, do not uh, directly access uh, the, the um, hardware. Instead, they make use of these other modules um, to, which provide a generic API that is hardware independent. So these modules essentially provide some uh, hardware abstraction. And finally, this box here just shows the module startup code in the superloop where all of the higher level modules are integrated. Here are some final notes. Um, now YouTube does not allow you to easily update videos. So any corrections or clarifications to a video will be uh, put in a YouTube video comment uh, for that video. Um, and it'll be pinned as the first comment. I also put uh, corrections and clarifications in the notes for the video. Now there are two YouTube or GitHub uh, repos for this course. This first repo uh, is for the source code. This includes the source code from my base embedded uh, course, plus additions and enhancements for courses I've created since then, including this course. Uh, this does not include the code provided by the IDE. So the other uh, repo is for course materials. This includes some documentation plus a zip file of my uh, STM32 cube IDE project. So this zip file includes the source code provided by the IDE. And there is a readme uh, in this repo that describes the documents and where I got them. Now links to these repos can be found in the notes for this video. I also just want to mention I used Windows 10 as my development machine um, for this when I developed this course, but the tools used like the IDE are meant to run on other platforms uh, like Linux and Mac OS. So if you try this course, I would be interested to hear what you think, so please use any of the normal YouTube communication methods. So that's it for the introduction. Thanks for watching.